Um, I think we're ready to start after some technical issues. Unfortunately, we are not allowed to use MacBooks as all other guys here. Um, so welcome to the next talk. Um, we would like to share our experience uh, with OpenShift at SBB. And what, we, um, what are our main learnings for the last one and a half year? Uh, my name is Tobias Denzler. I'm software engineer at SBB. My colleague here is Philip Ozer. He is from Elcom. And at SBB we work together in a team um, that works with OpenShift and all technologies and processes around OpenShift. So um, let's set the context for today. Um, Basically, we have a EIS layer for compute and storage, and on top of that, we run the OpenShift as a pass. And for Docker um, orchestration, um, our developers mainly as, um, work in two areas with OpenShift. Here on the, on the left-hand side, you see what we call on Git repo, um, the developers have the possibilities to use existing Git, Git repos and build images on OpenShift, deploy their applications, do changes, all in a kind of self-service stuff or DevOps style. Uh, on the other side, what, what's called um, infrastructure images um, is we provide some basic infrastructure um, like databases, messaging, for example, NoSQL databases, Cassandra clusters, and so on, that developers really easily can instantiate um, with existing templates and use them right away in their project. Uh, today, we mainly focus on a kind of uh, developer view or a developer perspective of this context. Uh, we try to, to cut off details how to run and maintain an OpenShift cluster. Uh, and we try to focus on how our developers work with OpenShift and what are the main learnings uh, from, from the developer point of view. Uh, first, to give you some background, um, at the moment, we run three OpenShift clusters. Uh, there's one, what we call in-house cluster, on our own hardware, and two additional ones on AWS, one for productive usage and one for development usage. Uh, in total, we run about 1,500 containers. Um, numbers are already outdated by now. Uh, to give you a kind of idea of the scaling we use uh, for our in-house cluster, we use about 700 uh, CPU cores, 7 terabyte memory, and about 3 terabyte storage. Um, numbers are increasing rapidly. Uh, at the moment, we have on our productive in-house cluster about 400 OpenShift projects. On AWS, it's about 50. Uh, we provide 24-7 operation um, for all of our productive clusters. We have a team that do the whole on-call stuff in the background. And we also have several big players or big applications from SBB that runs completely on an OpenShift cluster. Um, an example, you maybe know the SBB mobile app um, for checking trains or buying tickets. Um, every request from the mobile app is going to the backend on OpenShift uh, running on AWS. And there are also some other um, big applications. For example, if you, if you buy a ticket at train station, uh, you're Calculation will be served by backends hosted on OpenShift. 
Since summer 2016, we um, had a channel availability of about 99.9%, .9%, so um, not too bad. For cloud projects, for cloud projects to be successful, you need to have certain technical features, we call them capabilities, available. Um, this includes things like reliability, if something fails, you, your application still has to run, scalability, build support, yeah. build support, deployment support, logging, um, um, support to find your services, so some naming service support, monitoring, legacy support. So these capabilities are important for your applications. And we will look now into how we achieve these capabilities. The, the important thing is to achieve them, it is a collaboration among the, the OpenShift that provides some feature, the development stack that provides some features, and the application. And together, they achieve these capabilities. We will just look into some of them. We don't have that much time here. Builds, the capability of builds. What does the application have to do? The application, in our case, has to deliver either a self-running char file or its own Docker file. So that's, that's its task. Then the stack allows laun to launch uh, a build of a Docker image in the CI job. So in, your, in our Jenkins, it, it allows to, to build the, the, the image. And uh, we have some support to handle a self-running char. That means we have a basic container image that supports this. And OpenShift for this topic um, allows to run the builds on the platform. The guys that maintain uh, the Docker infra the, the Jenkins infrastructure are quite happy about that. It takes a lot of uh, CPU power for this. Some learnings out of that. Uh, well, with Docker, it's important that one uses uh, caching uh, to, to make the, the, the builds quick. And um, SSDs are a good idea for, for the Docker, um, uh, the thing where the Docker images are stored. And uh, in OpenShift, as there's a, l a lot of security uh, constraints that uh, an, an application cannot attack something, uh, you cannot run your container as a root. So this causes some problems um, in as developers if you want to do more elaborate things. Next, capability, reliability and scalability. Uh, what is the task of the application? The application has to indicate when is a con container alive and when is a container usable. A, life, a container that is not alive should be killed by the, con by the infrastructure so that it starts again and is, is uh, in a better uh, shape. If it's not usable, it doesn't get requests from the external world. Then the application should also support that it can run in multiple instances, so it shouldn't require a singleton to run. And it also has to tolerate cr a container crashes. So cr containers can crash at any time. The platform doesn't, pro doesn't um, um, give you the guarantee that the container won't be killed, so your application has to support that. Then um, your uh, application also has to make explicit what routes it needs. That means what external URLs come to your application and internal routes, in, in OpenShift terms, this is a service, what other services you need, that's important for load balancing. Uh, and finally, we recommend applications to use some failure isolation patterns so that certain problems uh, will be solved by the application itself. Then we have some support for this uh, in the stack. Here we have, for example, Spring Actuator to provide uh, container aliveness and container use um, whether a container is usable with the Spring Actuator, that's very easily done. And things like the circuit breaker component, uh, which implements one of the failure isolation patterns. And what does OpenShift do? OpenShift ensures that N instances are alive. And if some instances are dead at a certain time, it kills them so that again N will be right. And you can increase N or decrease N as you you want it. OpenShift also does load balancing for the external um, URLs arriving, but also internally if you use another uh, application in OpenShift. And as OpenShift can supervise your load on your containers, um, if there's a lot of load, it can scale up. So it can increase N, and then you have more uh, capable, you can handle more load.
So uh, one learning is that th these containers can be killed at any time. And another learning is that we have to distinguish between an alive, uh, usable um, container, and we tend also to publish information about more detailed status of the container. That's interesting for people um, seeing whether the applications run fine. Deployment, um, in particular the rolling upgrade deployment. What is in the responsibility of the application? The application has to update uh, the database um, schema. So any time something has to change, it's in the it's a task of the application. It should support backward compatibility of the database. And uh, if, if other um, parties are using the, an application, it has to provide either backward compatibility or offer multiple versions of its service. For the DDL updates, we have Flyway in the stack. So the application automatically updates the database whenever the schema is in the wrong version. And with these preconditions, with, with these um, things, with these uh, requirements of the application and the stack, OpenShift will then orchestrate the rolling upgrade. That means it will uh, kill one of your old services, um, uh, launch a new one, and so on, until you have only the new versions running. You know, one challenge in that respect is um, we have different uh, in uh, stages in projects. We have a, a test development stage, test stage, integration stage. You can have so as many as you want. And if you pass from one stage to the next, we have to manage all the configuration so that um, you have again the same services running and th that the your, your version that runs fine uh, is passed along. No. Uh, logging, the final topic here. Um, the application's task is to write logs to standard out in a defined format with correlation IDs so that requests that belong together can be correlated. And in the stack, we have Spring Cloud Sleuth for, for this that can be used. And in OpenShift, we have storage and indexing of logs and a search GUI so that we can have a look at what your GUIs are like. Um, some learnings in this uh, area, uh, we had have sometimes some issues with overruns because uh, if you have a lot of logs that are written out, um, uh, eventually your network is is uh, on, in the on the limit or your provider is on the limit. We currently use a SaaS solution, software as a service solution, so an external service for that. And the another problem we still have, but soon will have resolved, is data protection issues. And um, the logs are currently not in Europe, and that can can be a problem. Okay, um, we already heard some of our learnings and here are our top priority learnings um, we experienced. Um, maybe the most important learning from last year is uh, one container does not count. What it means, um, in OpenShift you always have to be aware that your container can fail at any time. Um, this can can be due to different reasons. Maybe your application has an error and needs to be restarted. But it can also happen uh, if maybe due to hardware failures or maintenance and your pod need to be restarted or your container needs to be restarted on another node in the cluster. Um, so really beware of that and <laughs> never go to production until you scale that least to two instances. Uh, also, test for reliability. Um, we do at SBB, we do this on two different levels. Uh, on application level, we use a chaos monkey that randomly kills running containers and we try to investigate how the applications behave in case of failover. Uh, but we also do more infrastructure reliability testing. So, for example, we uh, shut down the master node or kill some uh, worker node completely and check if OpenShift behaves correctly in, in, the, in the way that it restarts pot on other nodes in the cluster. Uh, Self-service um, 
on the one hand it's really cool because we we can empower the teams everything can be automated you're really independent in developing uh, applications uh, of course we also try to use devops processes and thoughts as much as we can uh, but it's also a um, bit tough because until now the the application or the engineering team only needs to know some some line of code um, but now they really have responsibility over the application over container they need to know the infrastructure maybe they need uh, to know the monitoring do 24 7 so there's a lot more responsible uh, responsibility to the team um, Talking about experience, um, we also uh, see a lot of new technologies, um, no SQL databases, messaging systems, um, and we still have a lot to learn how we can use them, what's in case of error, what happens with fixes and so on. We also learned a lot of Docker. Um, be aware that if you use a JVM in a Docker container, you really need a lot of memory. And beware of um, the second point. Um, at the moment, Docker leaks um, the number of CPUs of your underlying hardware to or into the container. Um, that leads to a situation where your JVM thinks um, that there are 50 cores for doing garbage collection. So, not ideal situation. Um, the last point uh, I want to mention here is uh, infrastructure images. As we already heard, uh, OpenShift has some restrictions on running containers on the root privileges. Um, it's not possible or not possible per, per default. So, most of the time you end up re-engineering some docker hub images and add support for running as non-root um, so that's one point uh, you have to consider and the other thing is when it comes to cluster technologies um, based on IP addresses um, you, you also have the problem that you you're not guaranteed to have a fixed IP address because your container can fail at any time. Um, so you cannot rely on the IP address to build up your cluster. So you need some other ways to do this. So to summarize this up, um, mainly three points. First, time is over. Um, we need one minute. Um, first of all, we were surprised by the success we had. Uh, with OpenShift at SBB. It's now really an alternative to our classic uh, WebSphere platforms. Second point, OpenShift itself, it's really stable. And of course, it's a young product and still needs some improvements. But the open source community around OpenShift Origin, as well as the guys from Red Hat, uh, do a really great job. And last thing, if you use Spring Boot, that's uh, the right choice. Um, it really fits nice into the Docker container, OpenShift ecosystem, and speeds up your development. So to come to an end, there are still some rough corners here, but the direction is really promising, and it's a lot of fun to develop with OpenShift. Thank you. and. Please leave your feedback at the end. And if you have any questions, come to us. We, will, we are glad to help you. Thank you.